In this video, I'm going to go through some tips and tricks for translating trading view indicators over into Python code. I'll show you how you can find the definition of the indicator that trading view uses, and then how we can translate that into extremely optimized Python code that we can add to our library of indicators. Now there are lots of other libraries out there like pandas TA, like TALib, that have most of these common indicators installed with them. But for a lot of these indicators, there's no universally agreed on definition of them, which means that most of them will return results that are very slightly different from TradingView. But those small differences can compound and massively affect the accuracy of your backtests or the performance of your strategy in live trading. And so as you get to a more intermediate advanced level, I'd highly recommend creating your own library of optimized indicators that you trust and you agree with the methodology that's been used to calculate them. That way you don't have to rely on someone else keeping their library updated or not making any changes later down the line etc, etc. So here we are in trading view, I'm using Microsoft stock as an example here. And I've got a very, very basic pine script set up here. So I'm just plotting the EMA with length 15 on the open here. This will give us a baseline to compare to and we can ensure that our indicator is actually calculating everything properly. If you want to be 100% sure that your indicator's functioning properly, you'll need to use the exact same set of open, high, low, close data that TradingView is using here. As typically, the candles differ very, very slightly between data providers, so that'll throw your indicator off a little bit. There are two ways of accessing this data. One of them is to just go up to the top right here and click export chart data. But for that, you'll need the pro plus plan, which is currently $30 a month. And that way you can export any open, high, low, close data that you want. But there's also a Python package over here called TV data feed, which I'll leave a link to in the description, which can be used to scrape some test data from trading view so we can compare the values of our indicators. This repo is not currently maintained, so it may not work by the time you get to it. Regardless, let's continue over to Jupyter here. So you can see I've gone ahead and scraped that data using the TV data feed module, and I have my Microsoft data up and running here. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do here is to find the definition of the EMA function as per trading view. There are a couple of places that I typically look when I want to find function definitions. The first one is the language reference manual, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So you can search for whatever function you happen to be using. So in this case, the EMA, and it gives you a relatively detailed breakdown here on how the function is defined, how it's calculated. And then you can just translate this pine script here into Python code. Now, not every indicator will have the definition in here. So this one doesn't. This is just showing you an example of how to use it. Another place where you can find these definitions is inside this indicator menu itself. So if I search for pivot, pivot point standard, we can click on this little question mark here. And that'll give you more details about how the calculations are functioning here for these different modes, which you can then go and plug into Python later on. So that's the reference manual, as well as the help center here. There is another manual over here, so the user manual, but this is more about high level overviews. So for example, if you're not sure what the ternary operator does here, you can come and find a concise detail of that. This guide is more useful for the syntax of PineScript rather than individual function definitions. So we found the definition for the EMA easy enough inside here. So I'll go click on it again. Let's go write out this same logic using a numpy 
in Python. So I'll create a new function here. I'll call it Pine EMA, and I'll take the same signature, so the source and the length. And the first thing we're going to do here is to create an empty array containing the values of our EMA indicator. So I'll say int for indicator is equal to numpy.empty. The size of this array, well, it's just going to be the same shape as our source here, so shape. And the D type is going to be float, so it's just going to be floating point numbers here. So if the source that we pass in is 1300 rows, so 1300 different open, high, low, close values, whatever they happen to be, our array here that we create is going to be exactly the same length. We're doing this for optimization purposes. It's much faster to create an array of the correct size and then fill in those values than it is to try appending lots of arrays together or expanding the size of an array. Those are very expensive operations compared to just simply filling in the individual values. I'm sticking to pure numpy and Python for this function so that we can use number here to compile it. I'll explain more about how number works a little bit later on, but that's why the syntax here might be a bit different than what you're used to. So the next thing we need to do here, we can just copy straight from the definition. So we're just taking alpha and that's going to be equal to two divided by the length plus one here. And after that, we're ready to start assigning values here. So if we take a closer look at that ternary operator, we see that if the previous value of the indicator is NA, so if it doesn't exist, then we want to set the current value of the indicator to the current value of our source. So we'll loop through source here. So for every value of source, that's going to give a value of indicator. So for i in range len source, and then we want to write in this provision here. So if the previous value doesn't exist, so that's going to be if i is equal equal to zero. So if it's the first value, then what we want to do is we want to set the value of int at index i to be the same as the source at index i and then continue here. So continue means don't do anything else for this iteration and restart at the next value of i. If you wanted to make this indicator resistant to NANs, so if you had some missing data here, but you wanted this indicator to handle it, you'd also want to add that behavior in here. So for example, we could say if the current value of source, so if the current open value in our case is NAN, then we just want to set the indicator equal to the source here. So NAN in our case. So or numpy dot is NAN source I. Or if I is greater than zero and NP dot is NAN and I minus one. So the exponential moving average that we're defining here, it relies upon the previous value of the indicator. So if that's NAN, well, just set the current value of the indicator equal to the source. So that handles our edge cases here, or the first part of that ternary operator. But if things are behaving as normal, we just want to do a normal calculation here. So int i is equal to alpha multiplied by the current value of source plus one minus alpha multiplied by end i minus one. So as this value of i here goes from zero to the length of source, which is also the same length as this array, this indicator array will get slowly filled in here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do end slice from zero to length minus one is equal to numpy.nan. I'm doing this again to match trading view. If you go into trading view and you go all the way back to the beginning of this data series back in 1980, you'll see the same thing happen. 
while the EMA is warming up, the values are NA, so they're not displayed. And I'm just mirroring that here in my indicator. But after all of that, we're ready to return India. And hopefully there won't be any syntax errors. So let's run that. Perfect. Now, as I mentioned, we're using numpy arrays here. So you can't pass a pandas series straight into this function. We're doing that for optimization purposes. So the data that we'll pass in here will be data.open. So I'll just grab the open column here. And I'll convert that to numpy with two underscore numpy like this. We'll get a simple numpy array, which I can then put through our function here. So pine EMA gave the length value, so let's say 15 to keep it the same as the one I'm using on the chart. And there we go. That's looking quite reasonable to me. We can also time this using time it here, which should be installed if you use Jupyter. And we can see this is taking about 3.75 milliseconds per loop. So that's for roughly five years of stock data here, which is okay. But we can go faster here. I mentioned earlier that we imported number here. So from number import ngit. And what that's going to do if I use that decorator here, so at ngit, is it's going to compile this function here using numbers just in time compiler. That's what JIT stands for. And the idea is that we can get Python to be as fast as other compiled languages like C or Rust or something like that by compiling the functions ahead of time to behave more like those other languages. It's currently not compatible with pandas functionality, and I don't know if that's in the roadmap, but if we test the time here, you'll see it makes a significant difference. So the first run here took a while because it was compiling, but after it runs the first time, we can see it's now 31 microseconds, whereas before it was taking about three and a half milliseconds. So that's roughly a 100 fold increase in speed here just from adding this decorator. And in my view, it's well worth going to the effort of optimizing your indicators to this extent, because it's something you're going to use for the rest of your trading career in Python. Now, of course, this Pine EMA here is going to return to us a numpy array. So we lose all our information about the different times and things like that, which can be important further on in the script. So the way to deal with that is you can just assign a new column in the data frame here. So data, let's say, call it EMA, is equal to this. And then if I run data here, just to show you what that looks like, we now just have an EMA column in here. Pandas knows how to deal with it because the returned object here, the returned numpy array, is exactly the same length as our data frame here. You can also do this with series. So if I have a value x and I set that equal to data.open.copy. I'll show you what that looks like. I can then just turn x into an EMA series by just doing something like x.eloc slice the whole thing is equal to our pine EMA here. And now we have all the EMA values instead many, many permutations of this. You can benchmark them for yourself. You can also do things like just create a series here. So pd.series, run this value inside, and then set the index equal to data.index. And that should also work. You can see we get the exact same result here. It might be worth here comparing to pandas TA, so we can see the increase in speed that we've got here. So I'll import pandas TA as TA. Then we'll do a time it TA.EMA data.open and 15. Let's see what that spits out. So that took 459 microseconds per loop here. Now it's not an exact fair comparison because it's wrapping everything up in the pandas series. So let's compare it to this one here. Time it. We can see our version using a number here is still roughly 10 times as fast as the pandas TA version. 
which depending on how much data you're iterating over could be a very big deal. And like I said, this is a long-term investment in your trading career, having a library of indicators that you know and trust. We can test whether the robustness to NAN's work here by feeding it into itself. So let's go over here. Let's get rid of the time it and we'll just pass the whole thing into itself. So we'll do pine EMA 15 and it hopefully won't crash. Seems fine to me. And then finally, we can compare the values that we gather from this to trading view and try and see moderately accurately how good they are. So this is 0 to 16. Let's go have a look at that on the graph here. Make sure you zoom right the way in, 0 to 16 here. You can scale things up. So 260.55, pretty much exactly correct there. It was likely a case my cursor just isn't accurate enough. So that's it for this video. I hope it helps you translating indicators into Python and I'll see you in the next one.